Thank you, Steve, for the kind introduction. Tuesday Night Live, I am thrilled to be here and talk with you about how we're using machine learning at AWS Security with some of our new services and products and things you'll hear about this week. A quick shout out to the Guard Duty team. Congratulations on the announcement. It's available in the console. Highly recommend that you check it out. As Steve mentioned, I was the co-founder of Amazon Macy. And when we built the service, there really was three components that we wanted to think about. How do you protect, how do you secure, and how do you classify content wherever it lives inside of AWS? And to do that, we also worked with some pretty phenomenal partners. Guard Duty and Macy actually both shared a customer as our very first customer to give impact and influence of how we were thinking about workflows and strategies to solve security at scale challenges. So it's my privilege and honor to welcome Greg Peters, Chief Product Officer from Netflix, to have a quick chat with myself and Steve. So let's welcome Greg to the stage. I'm sure everybody also wants to get a quick adult beverage here coming up. So let's just go right at it. Let's do it. All right. So Netflix is really known for a few things, being innovative with AWS services, while also open source projects and, and work. So how does that apply for security? Uh, we're equally as passionate about collaborating with other developers, the industry, and um, coming up with you know, great tools uh, for security as well. We actually just released a bunch of new um, projects uh, this year. Brings our total count, I think, of security-related open source projects to around 15. That's awesome. Most of those are AWS-related. Um, they're targeted at tools, applications that security teams can use to deal with high-velocity, large-scale cloud deployments. It sounds familiar. <laughs> um, all while reducing sort of the tax or limiting the tax on developers to get to great security. I think what's been great is we've seen a lot of collaboration, there's a lot of developers out there, a lot of companies out there that want to participate in trying to figure out a new, better way to do security but because you can unlock a whole bunch of new opportunities that being in the public cloud enables. Awesome. Any projects you can mention specific? Sure. Um, so actually last DEF CON we released a couple of projects that allow developers to simulate application DDoS attacks and see how you know, they, they can deal with that. Um, we've released a couple of projects recently um, called Aardvark and RepoKid, which um, take Access Advisor data and use that to automate the setting of application permissions. Those are good examples awesome. of that. That's great, Steve. I mean, open source is so important to us at AWS, so. It is. So one of the things that we were really proud to announce last year was Signal to Noise, S2N, which is our version of a TLS library. Uh, we thought that the existing options didn't quite meet our needs in terms of performance and security, so we chose to build our own, and we made it available for everybody through the open source process, and we continue to improve it. Uh, so for example, uh, we have a FIPS version now that's available to meet certain government requirements in the, the S2N world. Uh, additionally, we've formally verified the random number generator uh, in the S2N stack. Uh, formal verification gives you the ability to prove the properties of software that it's actually doing what you expect. Uh, and moreover, we've added a few more tweaks into that process, so there's prediction resistance. Uh, in the random number generator. So even if the random number generator itself is compromised in some way, there's additional entropy that's added back into the process, sort of raising the security bar for everybody for TLS. It's awesome. So Greg, obviously with the amount of data that Netflix has available, how do you leverage it for security? Yeah, one of the great things about being in the cloud is that we have access to a bunch of you know, well-structured, highly reliable, easy-to-use data sources, and we can use those sources to build automation and tooling around it to support better security. Um, examples are you know, at the network level, you know, you know, VPC flow logs, you've got at the application service level, things like Access Advisor and increasingly CloudTrail. Um, and then we can use that to um, you know, support a bunch of automation. A good example, thinking back to the, um, the open source project we yeah. just mentioned, um, in terms of right-sizing permissions for a new application. You know, that historically might have been done by either being, you know, starting with a super permissive model, which is great for developer speed, but rarely ends up in an optimal security state, or to the other end of the spectrum, a default deny kind of model where you know, rely on developers to sort of bump their head up against a permissions wall and then, you know, find the right permission, iteratively go through that process, which is painful and frustrating and slow for a development perspective. So, 
Now we get to shift to a totally different approach where developers can just launch a new application, deploy a new application, we start with a wide set of permissions around that, and then we observe how that application actually behaves. And then we iteratively whittle down the permission set until we get to the optimal, aka least privileged, you know, state from a security perspective, but the developer hasn't had to do a single thing. The security team hasn't had to do a single thing. The developer hasn't needed to understand the complexities of a large infrastructure and figure out you know, how to get the right permissions. The security team hasn't needed to know what's specific about that new application, what are the dependencies and requirements for that. It just happens automatically, which is the way to get to great security and the kind of opportunities that we're excited about pursuing. That's awesome. So you have a few folks from AWS in the audience tonight. What would you like us to work on next? What are some of the challenges that you have? You're like, oh, if I just had this, like, what would that look like for you? Yeah, in, in the security domain, I think there's a set of characteristics which um, define or at least inform where I think you guys can be way more effective and have an opportunity to produce things that we can't produce. Sure. You know, it's things like um, where there's a set of data, you know, sources that come from really, you know, wide or disparate sources. Could be across region, could be across accounts. And you, know, you need full visibility, super wide visibility to really understand what's going on and identify issues. I think guard duty is a really good example. You guys just announced that. We've been using it for um, a bit. And it's great for you know, finding things like, hey, we've got an API call using AWS keys that's coming outside of AWS. That might be a signal that we've had a you know, yeah. credential compromise or something like that. Um, another set of characteristics are where there's just a, you know, a really intensive amount of data processing, right? Where it's difficult or even you know, cost prohibitive for us to go do. Maybe the analytics layer on top of that, the ML, you know, is a huge investment to get that right. And you guys can amortize the cost of that investment, do it at a way bigger scale, because you know, you're, you've got multiple consumers of that product than we could ever justify. Macy's a great example of that. You know a little <laughs> bit about that. Um, and it's super effective for us in terms of you know, understanding when there's sensitive data in some of our S3 buckets. That's awesome. I think the other big piece, and obviously we're really passionate around machine learning and solving and thinking about the scalability challenge and how machine learning can play. But not answering a question for you, but how do you think about machine learning for security at Netflix? Well, I think ML in generally is transforming multiple parts of our business. So whether it's you know, content programming and production, you know, using ML as decision support to figure out what shows we want to make, making the process of producing those shows more efficient. Um, on the consumer facing side, you know, we use ML to personalize the service and optimize the delivery service, but we also use it in the security space on the consumer facing side for things like you know, fraud detection, account um, takeovers, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, increasingly, we're also using it on the corporate side where we're using it to understand uh, data access patterns, application access patterns, and then identify you know, uh, anomalous activity that might indicate malicious behavior. So it's a big issue for there, but it's, it's transforming pretty much everything. Awesome. Steve, machine learning for us, I mean, it's yeah, So our, our experience in building uh, Amazon Macy, as you're really aware, uh, has taught us that it is the single most effective way to increase the efficiency of our staff and make sure they're focused on that which really matters. Uh, Guard Duty, of course, launched based on a machine learning uh, engine as well. And I think what you'll see is a continued effort in that space where we're using machine learning to help whittle down that which we have to look at from a security perspective. So given the size of both AWS and Netflix, I mean, how do you plan and build for scale? When you think about security at scale, like how do you focus on that? And where do you focus the energy? Well, a cornerstone is um, getting humans out of the loop and automation. That's, that's um, you know, obviously part and parcel of doing that. But when we think about scale, we think beyond just sort of the number of instances and you know, traffic and um, data volume. But we start to think about how do we accommodate a growing and diverse set of developers who have yes. different goals, they have different constraints, they have different knowledge and expertise in different parts of the infrastructure, and we want to make it easy for them to buy into what we're trying to achieve from a security perspective to, to do the right thing in an easy way. And the, the main model we have for that is what we call our paved path you know, framework, which is we invest in generalized tooling and infrastructure across multiple domains, it could be telemetry and logging, it could be continuous deployment, you know, et cetera. And then we weave through that um, automated security components. So developers are you know, super excited and motivated by getting their features out, launching their applications, having a fast pace of innovation. So they're motivated to use the paved path approach because it gives them that benefit in most cases. And then the security stuff just sort of comes along for the ride. And that's um, a super useful way to think about how we yeah. scale that. No, it's awesome. Steve? 
I think this is one of the, again, this is the sort of the same thing of building the f fundamental components that help people practice security properly underneath. And ties back to the part I was saying about developers really want to do the right thing. So if we can give them tools that help do things well in the right fashion, it makes them go faster, they deliver better quality code, we have to do less work to remedy problems in the back end, works for everybody. Totally true. So one thing I do have to stress about Netflix is they are a phenomenal partner. They work really closely with our services as we go through beta process, and one of those processes was a Macy Hack Day. So you want yeah, to talk a little it's, bit about it? Yeah, it's actually a general hack day we had. Um, we do these regularly, and um, this last one, we had a great opportunity to bring um, developers from the Macy team, have them pair up with um, developers on our side that were building a new application called Exploit Monkey, and it's part of our broad simian army if you've heard about Chaos Monkey or the various different monkey tools that we have that are used to um, simulate you know, real world events and we you know, run them against our infrastructure and see how well we respond, how we are. And Exploit Monkey is introducing you know, security conditions, uh, you know, replicating uh, hacker attacks or um, security faults. And what we did is we wired, this, the team actually you know, wired Macy um, into Exploit Monkey. So when we would inject a security fault, Macy would detect it and it would flag it back to Exploit Monkey. Exploit Monkey could then you know, suppress notification based on that because it would say, hey, look, this is just a, you know, a test. But we'd also be able to test the, the, the accuracy, the, the correctness, and the speed at which we were responding to security issues. And that's, a, I think, a great example of taking this heavy lifting that you guys are doing and investing in at scale and then you know, pairing it up with sort of an application-specific um, implementation using our specific infrastructure and our needs. So it was awesome. a great, great collaboration example. No, I mean, you guys, in terms of a partnership perspective, I can't say enough. I mean, being on those calls and just getting the feedback, you made a lot of difference around guard duty and around with Macy. So we thank you for the support. It's been a great partnership. My only complaint is that we hadn't had beer at this event. <laughs> Where's the beer? Where's the Harley? In any event, we're out of time, but thanks for sticking around. Really appreciate you guys being here tonight. And with that, I'm going to welcome Peter DeSantis back to the stage.